That's, the, I think, the one thing that I want to stress the most in terms of, of collagen is, is going to impact, impact any form of healing. So the arguments are, the, so on two sides of the camp, the one argument is collagen gets broken down into the amino acids in the gut, so it literally doesn't matter, and taking collagen is a waste of money. The other camp is, well, actually, when collagen gets broken down, it gets broken down into proline, hydroxyproline, actual more polymers, not amino acids, so more of the actual polypeptides. And because of that, that can then increase blood levels of those polypeptides and therefore potential for healing because there's more proline and hydroxyproline floating through the blood, which can then become mature collagen. Okay, so those are the two camps. You probably know which camp I'm in because I'm talking about this. All right, so here, uh, vitamin C enriched gelatin supplementation. Before intermittent activity, that's, I think, the one thing that I want to stress the most in terms of, of collagen is these lovely graphs that maybe you'll look at one day. Let's talk through them, okay? So this here looked at glycine, proline, hydroxyproline, lysine, hydroxylysine, and leucine, okay? They looked at the difference between a placebo gelatin powder, five grams of gelatin powder, and then they looked at 15 grams of gelatin powder. What they found was, one, that the 15 grams was able to increase levels of our actual amino, the polypeptides that it gets broken down into. And interestingly, it was around, so it basically what they said was dosing it one hour before exercise is going to be beneficial in improving collagen synthesis because if you dose it here and then you work out here when you have higher levels of glycine, hydroxyproline, and proline in your blood, when you then stress tissues through exercise, when you then do exercise that causes blood flow to go to your cartilage, for example, you then have a higher chance of these being incorporated into collagenous tissue, okay? This year again, um, so what they looked at here was they actually did a, a muscle biopsy and they looked at the amount of collagen that was actually found in the muscle biopsy based on their pre-levels, the placebo, five grams and 15 grams. So again, what they did, they took the biopsy, did this in a Petri dish, hence why we got you know, the test tube plus the human. So it's human data, but again, still done in a Petri dish. And what they found was that the, and I apologize, I misspoke. What they, look, what they did, which is actually really, really cool, is they took the serum, the blood, the plasma of the patient, put that in the test tube to watch how much collagen is made. What they found was that the serum that contained the higher levels of glycine, proline, hydroxyproline, all these polypeptides and amino acids, the rate of collagen synthesis in the test tube was higher. Cool study, right? It kind of shows us that, hey, if, and again, there's an assumption there, if that plasma, that amount of peptides and amino acids, if that gets near the collagen to be made, it's likely that it's gonna increase rates of collagen synthesis. Hence why doing it around exercise is going to increase the rate that that can happen because blood flow to tendons, ligaments, and cartilage increases with exercise. I've started having patients dose their collagen peptides before exercise. Again, it also gets patients exercising. 